Hello friends and welcome back to the Hall of Craft! I'm back with another video for you guys. So I have made these big chunky rune hammer inspired terrain boards in the past and these things are great. They have a nice carved grid on them. They're big, they're durable, and they look good. We love Runehammer here, and he has brought a lot to the community with this idea. But I think I can add a little bit more to it, and also kind of combine it with some other ideas that I've seen here on YouTube. So my big problem with these boards is that over the years and over my various apartment moves, the corners have gotten quite dinged up, and the XPS foam underneath gets exposed quite easily, kind of compromising your paint job. And that's just to do with the fact that they have these really vulnerable corners to them. So I figured that one thing I could do to instantly upgrade the quality of the rune hammer boards is to kind of smush them together and combine them with Professor Dungeon Master's ultimate dungeon terrain, little dungeon pizza as it's known in the community uh, method. I think I can kind of combine those two things to create some much nicer and much more uh, reliable and safe boards for myself. So I think that by combining these two ideas and doing it now as the Alistair of the future, who's a much better crafter than the Alistair of the past, I think I can create myself some nice, beautiful, durable, long-lasting terrain boards. So the plan here is I'm gonna create three boards, each roughly about two foot in diameter, and I'm going to make them double-sided. That way I can have six biomes ready to go whenever I need them. And because my channel kind of functions as a archive of crafting tutorials, I'm not going to smush all of these into one video. I'm going to give each biome its own video, and I'm gonna put them in a playlist that you can find here in the top right if you're watching this after it's posted. I'm going to put them all there together so that if you need to find a certain biome at a glance, it's right there and you don't need to watch through a 40 minute video to dig for the information you're looking for. So if you want to skip this intro after watching it for the fifth time, I'll make sure that I put bars in the bottom so everything is clearly labeled. So for this video, I am going to be focusing on the forest board. So to start out with this one, I just take a piece of string, a screw, and a sharpie. And by placing the screw in the middle and wrapping the string around the sharpie, I will draw a circle as big as I can on my two foot by eight foot and two inch thick sheet of blue XPS foam. This stuff is great. You can just get it at the hardware store. And so one of the awesome things about the Rune Hammer train is that it is two inches thick and this foam facilitates that. I know that some versions of the UDT or the Dungeon Pizza go a little thinner, a little bit more uh, flat, but for this it's actually really important that we use the two inch thick because it'll facilitate the double-sided nature of these boards. Once that's drawn, it's time to cut. For this, I'll just cut as close to the circle as I can with a big knife, and then once I'm partially through the foam, I'll snap it over my knee. This gives me a much more manageable chunk. Once I have that chunk, I'll take it over to my Proxon and use it to cut off the corners. You could do this with a knife, it'll just take a lot more time and you'll have to be a lot more patient. I have the procs on, so I use it here because it saves me so much and it gives me a really nice smooth cut. Now it's time to draw the grid. For this, I just use a tape measure to find the center and then a triangle to square it up. From there, you can just mark out all of the inch marks with a pen and it's just a matter of connecting the dots from here on out. You can skip this step if you don't like playing with grids, but on these boards, I find them pretty subtle in the end after all the texturizing and other elements we add to it. And personally, as a DM, I find the grid very helpful on the table to just see things at a quick glance. The last thing I'm gonna do to all of the boards is just take a sanding block and smooth the rough edge that I cut with the procs on. I, because I'm treating these like double-sided boards, I'm treating this edge almost like the base rim on a mini and I'd like it to be as clean as possible. Okay, to start at the forest, similar to the other boards, I am going to start by smashing it up with a dumbbell. This gives a nice cracked texture right away. Once I'm done with that, I'm gonna use my knife to add some nice shallow cuts to establish that grid a little bit more defined. After those are finished, I'm gonna use a sculpting tool and a pencil and just run it along those cuts to help accentuate them a little bit more. To base coat and protect the board, I am going to mix up some black paint and Mod Podge and cover that over the whole thing. Once it's dry, it's time to paint. And for this, I'm gonna use a sponge. For the shadows, I'm gonna use dark purple. Then I will mix some brown with my purple and kind of 
paint that around all of those shadowy areas. After that, I'll just start mixing in greens and then brighter yellow greens and just kind of building up the highlights and getting a nice mix of tones on this board. Once that's totally dry, I am just gonna flock the shit out of this thing. So I'm gonna start by covering large areas of this board with white glue. Then I will sprinkle in a bunch of my light green flock with some of my dark green flock on top of that. While that's still drying, I will cover the rest of the board with more white glue. And then I'm gonna sprinkle a ton of green tea leaves over top of everything. Once that's totally dry, I will brush off all of the excess pieces along with any pieces that didn't get stuck well enough to stand the test of time. After that, I will brush on more white glue at key areas and then drop a bunch more flock into them. After that, I will cover the whole board with watered down white glue and then sprinkle all of my leftover flocking and tea leaf bits into it at random. After that's dry again, I will brush off any excess and then start gluing in some pieces of moss with some more white glue. I'm being pretty sparing with these pieces of moss because I'm not trying to add a lot of height to the board. Again, this is supposed to be a double-sided board, so I don't want it to be too awkward to flip over. Uh, so I'm just taking pieces of moss and kind of stretching them out and then gluing them flat on the board. And when you do this with it, it almost looks more like roots and less like, I think, the more common use of this kind of flocking as like bushes. While those are drying, I just dripped some dark green ink wash around randomly on the board to just add a little bit more variety in tones. And after that was dry, apparently I had not learned my lesson with varnishes because I attempted to coat this whole thing with matte varnish. Only I didn't actually have enough varnish left to coat it. I gave it like the shot glass amount of varnish that I had be give, been giving to all my other boards, but due to the amount of flock on this, it just like soaked it right up. And so I couldn't get full coverage with that. So I eventually started adding in more gloss varnish and more and more because it just kept soaking it all up. Once I had coated it all with varnish, there's quite a bit of varnish in there. I probably should have just applied this with the airbrush, but because it had worked on the other boards, with the exception of the lava board, to apply by brush, I had just assumed that I could get away with it here as well. But I didn't get away with it, and it dried cloudy as shit. So, so I could, I even tried to use a hair dryer as I could see it drying uh, cloudy to try and dry it faster or dry it like less in a less humid way to try and make sure that it didn't cloud up, but that only seemed to make things worse. And so as I could tell things were going downhill, I kind of panicked and just covered the whole board in quite a lot of water. 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 I covered the whole board in quite a lot of water to try and rehydrate it before it got too cloudy. And then I set it down on the floor and pointed a fan at it, hoping for the best. And here's how it looked the next day once it was completely dry. It's not great. Pretty cloudy but it's stiff as a board so I can start trying to salvage it. So I mixed together a nice dark green ink wash and just covered that all of all the problem areas. Once that was dry, I dry brushed those areas with uh, dark green and then getting progressively brighter with my greens to just add some uh, texture and depth back to those areas. And after doing that, the board was actually in a pretty decent place, so I kind of fixed my mistake yet again, but Moving forward, I will be a little bit more cautious with my matte varnishes or my gloss varnishes. Just my varnishes in general. I will be very apprehensive because they did me dirty on two boards already. Okay, after that's finished, the last thing you need to do to this board is just repaint that rim with more black paint and Mod Podge just to clean up any areas that kind of got uh, touched while working on it. Just make sure there's a nice black rim. The Mod Podge will also help kind of like protect it a little bit better and smooth it out a little bit more. And with that, it's finished. Let's take a look at how it turned out. All right, there we have it, double-sided terrain boards. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. 
a bit more of a simpler one than I've been doing lately, but sometimes it's nice to go back to the basics. And for me personally, it just feels good to have a nice staple in my collection that I know I can rely on. If you'd like to check out all of these other terrain board building videos, I will put a link to the playlist in the top right. I also have plenty of other terrain crafting and miniature painting videos that you can check out while you wait for the next one. Again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Have a good week, everyone.